This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 388 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is sponsored by Kentucky Performance Products. You can visit them at kppusa.com. Howdy, everybody. Glenn the Geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and welcome back to Horse Tip Daily. Well, today we have back with you another segment uh, from the Horses in the Morning show that happened this morning, and I, I really wanted to play it for you because I know that a lot of you don't get a chance to listen to all of the shows, and we also like to archive all of our tips that come from various shows here at uh, Horse Tip Daily. And I know many, many of you just listen to Horse Tip Daily, so this is where you get... Your, all your information. Well, today we had a fascinating conversation with Daniel Stewart. Daniel Stewart is an international coach and trainer. He's been coach of the U- United States equestrian teams for many, many years, and he's really kind of an expert in sports psychology. We have him on the Horses in the Morning show once a month to talk to us about sports psychology. And today we had a couple of callers call in and, and talk about fear, that they're a little afraid of different things when riding, and uh, it was fascinating the way Daniel handled it, and that's why we wanted to bring it to you here on Horse Tip Daily. I think you'll find it absolutely interesting and fascinating. He's a really neat guy. All right, hold on for Daniel Stewart from the Horses in the Morning Show with Jamie Jennings, myself, and Jennifer H. And uh, we'll be right back with that after this word from Kentucky Performance Products. Hi everyone, Glenn the Geek here. Kentucky Performance Products has become a favorite of many listeners of the Horse Radio Network. They have a product that we want you to consider called Contribute. Take a listen to episode 14 of the Tack and Habit Radio Show and you will hear a complete discussion on this product with Delia from Kentucky Performance Products. Contribute is the omega-3 fatty acid supplement that is so important to your horse's well-being. Contribute helps maintain soundness and longevity by protecting joints from damaging inflammation and sustains a strong immune response in horses of all ages. Learn all about omega-3 and 6 fatty acids and why they are so important by listening in at TackAndHabit.com, episode 14, or go to KPPUSA.com for more information. That's KPPUSA.com. Okay, this is from episode number 61 of Horses in the Morning at HorsesInTheMorning.com. If you want to listen to the rest of the episode, you can do that there. It's a little longer than our usual tip, but I definitely think it's worth it, and I think you'll find it fascinating. Here we go with Daniel Stewart. We do have a guest coming up, Daniel Stewart, stewartclinics.com. And this guy will completely school you as far as, you know, riding and fear and breaking you down and mentally building you back up. We've had a lot of people that have audited and ridden in the clinics that said that it really changed their riding. So uh, we're going to talk to him, to Daniel, a little bit today about the fear factor involved with riding. I'm not talking Joe Rogan eating spiders or anything. I'm talking about the fear of actually getting on your horse. And and, and we do have a, a listener that wrote in about it. So we're going to talk to him about that. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. Daniel is very easy to talk to, 347 637 And uh, if you have any questions for Daniel. That's great, and I think that Daniel's ready. So let's just uh, bring Daniel Stewart hey. on right now. Hi, everybody. How are you? It's nice to hear from you again. Hey, Daniel. How's it going? Uh, where, are you in sunny Florida right now? I am in sunny Florida. I'm never leaving sunny Florida. I was in some place cold and wintering last weekend. I'm I'm never leaving Florida again. <laughs> Okay, Daniel, we hate you, and uh, that's it for Daniel's segment. Uh, we'll be talking to him again next month. If I could see you, if, if I could show you what it looks like from outside my window, I don't think you'd be very happy either. <laughs> my palm trees are looking a little dry. I need to go and water them. I'll put on my, my, I'll put on my flip-flops and go water my palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what, Daniel? I'm in Phoenix, and my palm trees need some water too, buddy. So hey, that's <laughs> you can great. come on out here anytime. <laughs> um, I do, I, I do have to give you a little bit of a message, Daniel. Um, my one of my best friends in the whole world. Her name is Colleen, and she works for the Oaks. And she told me to tell oh. you that uh, she, you're coming to do a clinic in March, and she has really been working hard on her googly eyes, and on she's improving. <laughs> 
did she tell you what Google Eye means? That's so no. funny. No. She's great. Show me. All right. <laughs> it's interesting. When, when jumpers jump, oftentimes we'll see a little bit of a roundness in their back. And a lot of riders misinterpret that as they jump with a round back. The reason that a lot of jumpers have a rounded back is because their hips are pointing down. So they they take their hip bones and they point them down. And when you do that, it gives you the impression that your back is rounded. So to take the hip bones of a jumper and to, to encourage the hip bones to sort of face backwards as they were jumping instead of down towards the saddle, to get the hip bones to face backwards, I encourage riders to imagine that they have, you know, those little plastic googly eyes, you know, that you kind of shake them. I imagine, or I say, imagine you have one of one googly eye on each back pocket, and as you jump, you look behind you with those googly eyes, and that that gets the riders' <laughs> hips to look up and back rather than down towards the saddle, and it flattens their back out. So I just the technique called Google it. I just like Google it, Google it, Google it. Just imagine though those eyes on your hips are looking back rather than down, um, and it follows the same principle when riding. Keep your eyes up, you know, instead of looking down. So even the Google eyes on on your your back pockets are supposed to be looking up rather than down. So, oh, Colleen's great. They run a wonderful facility up there in in Lake City. They really do. And here I thought, Dan, it was because you were hot. <laughs> <laughs> wow, check out that Check out her hips Look at those hips Just put your Google eyes on those hips It's funny, and I do that I'll, I'll, I, I do a video analysis clinic And I'd be like and, and I'll videotape a rider And I'll freeze it I'm like, those are amazing hips Everybody look at her hips <laughs> And what I'm trying to say is They're supple and they move with their horse And they're symmetrical But it, everybody always misinterprets that as, Wow, check out her hips <laughs> <laughs> Dan, I got to tell you, you're a good-looking guy. I've heard from many women that uh, they wouldn't mind you checking out their hips, so oh. it works for them. <laughs> I check out a lot. My wife loves it. I check out about 30 women's hips a week, and I check them, I I, I check them out, and then and then I do it in slow motion, and then I rewind it, and I check out their hips frame by frame. My wife loves my job. <laughs> 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 Bless her heart. That's, that's why I never invite her along to, to come to my clinics. Good Lord. She would, she would be shocked. I, I thought I had the best job in the world. You've got the best job in nope, the world. No, nope, no, nope. You're mistaking, Glenn. That, that would be me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you guys yeah, you're are ridiculous. <laughs> well, hey, it's fun, Daniel, it's fun to talk mind, with you again. Do you mind taking a call? I'd love to take a call. Yeah, I think that would be great. Please let me take a call. All right. All right. We have on the line Kim Dobbins from Atlanta. Good morning, Kim. How are you? Hi, Jamie. I'm doing great. How are you? Fantastic. Good to hear you again. She's called us before, and uh, you're in my hometown of Atlanta, and I do believe we rode together um, before. Yes. So um, what is your question for Daniel? My question is, I still have a bit of a fear factor, and my wonderful horse senses this and will start trotting, and then he stops. And he won't continue because he knows I'm nervous. And I don't know I don't know what to do at this point. Somebody else can get on him that's ridden forever, and he just will go, go, go. So I think Boy. it's me. I know it's me. So I, I <laughs> need some help. Oh. <laughs> well, if I if I may, I think I might have some good advice for you. And 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 and, and off the bat, I I think I probably agree with you. I bet it's you too. <laughs> I know it's me. I know it's me. He's he's a good horse. And you know why I think it's you know why I think it's you is because you said you you have a wonderful horse. You know and yes. and you know it's interesting. We all ride. We all start riding for the same reason, and that's because we have a wonderful horse. Because we love this. Big fat furry butthead that makes us crazy, yeah. but but makes us crazy with <laughs> with love and passion at the same time. The right. amount of time we get squished into corners and stepped on, and still can love our wonderful horses is phenomenal. So I imagine that that it it, it might more or less come down to to you know to you rather than your wonderful horse because again he he appears to go forward with other riders. Um yes. I've always said a few things. I've always said that what's going through our mind is going through our body. So if what's going through your mind is 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 you know doubtful or hesitant or nervous, then, then then I'm pretty sure that, you know, what's going through your mind goes through your body and then we know how great of, you know, mind body readers our horses are. 
I've also said um, forever that our emotions control our emotions. So if we ride with negative emotions, oftentimes we start to develop some pretty negative ways of moving, some negative motions. Um, uh, now, this could be considered pretty great news because if we can change your emotions from negative, you know, having that negative you know, motion or causing negative emotions. If we can change our emotions to positive, I really believe that we can change our emotions to positive. Um, can I give you a couple of a couple of um, a couple of tools, a couple of tricks to try the next time? Sure. You're riding? Yes. All right. I, and I think you're going to like these. These aren't the kind of tricks where you have to go home and study and take notes and that sort of thing. There's just a couple of really really neat little tricks. The first the first one is this. All right. Um, I think a lot of us have heard of a technique called detachment. That's where when you get nervous, you pretend you're someplace else. You go to your happy place. I think that's all right. But to me, that that borders a little bit on avoidance. I feel nervous here, so I'm going to pretend I'm somewhere else. So I'm going to say detachment can work for a lot of athletes. But I think in your situation, it might not be great. However, there is a second form of detachment, which is uh, not nearly as well known, um, however, in my opinion, much stronger. It's called memory motivation. So and it just works like this, Kim. Um, the next time you're feeling nervous, take a deep breath, and instead of detaching and going to another location, remember a memory from your past. So it's like detachment, but you don't pretend you're in another location. You put yourself back, you detach and go to a memory in your past. And the memory is so amazing, so powerful, that it reminds you of why you love doing this in the first place. I lived in uh, Andalusia, Spain for many years, and I used to take our horses horse surfing. We would go out in the ocean and, and, and play with the horses in the water. And I remember if, if, if you take a big, fat Andalusian far enough out into the ocean, you can actually <laughs> turn him around and surf that sucker in. It's the coolest <laughs> thing in the world, right? It's called horse surfing. And, wow. and I had this one horse, and she loved horse surfing. She'd catch four or five waves. Then she'd go to knee-deep water and start rolling. You know, And I'm like, but I'm still on your back. You know, <laughs> But that memory to me is so powerful. <laughs> that even if I've been on, you know, flights for 36 hours and crossed nine time zones and been in 10 cities in 11 different days and I'm tired, I literally, I'll, I'll use that memory to motivate me. I'll use that memory to pump me up. So it's called memory motivation. So the first tool that I'd really recommend that you consider, Kim, is memory motivation. Instead of, um, you know, uh, uh, focusing on the negative, the nerves and that sort of thing, focus on the positive. Come up with a memory from your past, an amazing, massively great memory with your wonderful horse. The next time you're nervous, squeeze out that negative thought, push the negative thought out of your mind, and squeeze in that positive memory motivation. It's called memory motivation because you use the memory from your past to motivate you, you know, in, mm -hmm. in the present. Um, so, in, and I do believe this as riders, we we have amazing memories. You never see a tennis rack or a tennis player yell at its racket or hug its racket, you know. And you <laughs> never see a skier scream at his ski because it spooked at snow, you know. Right. <laughs> Right. As riders, as riders, we have amazing memories, and you know what? Oftentimes we forget them. You know, we focus on the nervousness, the tension, the doubt. Um, and the first trick is this: when you feel those negative emotions, remember why you love doing this, and to help you to really solidify that. I want you to come up with a memory. Today, think about it. What is the coolest, most wonderful thing I've ever done on my horse? And then relive that memory. Relive, like, smell what you smelled back then. If it was funny, feel, or if it was sunny, feel the, the sun on your shoulders. Regain every emotion associated with that memory. Um, and then uh, and then use that to motivate yourself in the future. So, so I think this is one I'd really like you to consider. It's super easy, and it's it's... It's very positive because it focuses on the positive things you've done in the past with your horse and how you can use those emotions to create more positive things on your horse in the future. Um, so memory motivation is one, and this next one is really fun. <clears throat> and I'm just going to give you two. I don't want to bog you down with a bunch, but I'll give you one more. Okay. Um, most times, and I'm sure you've heard of the of the term, be careful what you wish for, you might just get it. Um, right. Uh, uh, and then we've also heard of, you know, po uh, um, positive affirmation sentences. Those two things work hand in hand. Even if I'm a little bit nervous and I'm not feeling very good, if I repeat the words to myself, the positive affirmation words, I mm -hmm. feel good, I feel good, I feel good. If I repeat those words to myself, 
over time, I might start to feel better because be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. If I repeat to right. myself, I'm so nervous. I wish I'd stop being nervous. How come I'm so nervous? If I repeat those words to myself, I end up sort of focusing on the fact that I'm nervous. However, if I change it around to the positive affirmation sentence and say something like, I feel good, I feel good, I feel good, then be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. Now, I I like positive affirmation sentences. However, I believe there's a better way of repeating them. Um, and, and I think this is just great. To, to you and your listeners and Kim and everybody else, which feels stronger to you? If I repeat these two words to myself, I feel good, I feel good, I feel good. Or if I repeat them in this way, I feel good. Na, 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 so I definitely like the second one. <laughs> here's, the, here's the trick, Kim. Sing songs when you're writing. Songs can be the most powerful positive affirmation sentences. So your second piece of homework, in addition to coming up with a great, with a great positive mental uh, memory motivation, can come up with your song. Like my wife and I, we have our song. We love each other. We care for each other. We want to share something just between the two of us. I really do believe that as riders, we care for our horses to the same degree. I, 90% yeah. of my female students care for their horses more than their husbands. <laughs> you know? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a newlywed, Jamie, so. <laughs> yeah, well, fair enough. Well, I, I guess no if, we, if we care for our horses <laughs> this much, shouldn't we have, I guess, what, yeah, let's get a song for our horse. So now, now, I feel good. I think that's a really neat song. It helps you to it helps you to feel humor. It helps you to breathe. It helps you to tie into rhythm and harmony and that sort of thing. But it also made you giggle a little bit, and that's the point right. of this is to the, is to tap into the positive emotion that is sitting sort of latent right now because the negative emotions are squishing it down. So when it comes to your song, this is what I really encourage you to do. Um, think about the lyrics in the song. I feel good delivers a very powerful, you know, uh, um, message. Um, let me give you a couple other examples. I think I, I work a lot with uh, with cross country riders, um, and one of our cross country riders has an amazing song. Their song is this: "Ain't nothing gonna break my stride, nothing's gonna slow me oh, yeah. down. No, no, I yeah. gotta keep on moving." Yeah. So you know what? Even if they if they're jumping and they knock a fence over, they they see themselves. Ain't nothing gonna slow me down. Nothing nothing's gonna break my stride. I love right. that song because it's got the stride in there. It ties in with right. our horse. Um, one writer, she says, but I don't even compete, you know, so therefore I don't really need the song affirmations. And I'm like, well, well, what do you do? And she says, I trail ride, I hack. You know what her song is? I'm sitting on the top of my bay. Not on the dock of the bay, but on the top right. of my bay. One rider, one rider was um, she gets nervous at the canter. Um, she had a fall. She's getting back. She's getting. She's nervous at the canter. Her song is "Slow Down." You move too fast. You got to make this canter last. I think that's great. It's awesome. I really believe that music is powerful. You know, and that we've all woken up in a bad mood listened to our favorite song, and gotten into a good mood. Music right. can get inside. Music can create emotions in us, and those emotions are often you know, energetic and positive emotions. So if the emotions that you're feeling while riding are not energetic and positive, maybe a positive memory motivation from your past and a positive song in the present can can set yourself you know, up for that success. Um, now, I did something here. I, I pulled something up this morning because I was talking to somebody about this very thing. Um, I believe songs should be uh, age-specific, you know. So so depending on your age, you know, all, you know, in all honesty, some writers have never heard that song, you know, ain't nothing going to break my stride, nothing's going to slow me down. I work with a lot of young writers. Hannah Montana has a song called The Climb, and I'm looking at the oh. song lyrics right now. It's just it's a beautiful song. It's got great rhythm, but the message is unbelievable. Um, uh, and her, the lyrics say things like this: uh, "Got to keep my head held high. Um, there's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. It's always going to be an uphill battle. Um, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, oh, I can almost see it. That dream I'm dreaming. And I think your dream is to re is to rekindle the feelings of confidence and enjoyment on your horse. Right. Um, you know, uh, sing it, a Daniel. couple. Sing it. What's, we gotta feel it. Come on. You gotta feel it. Oh, you got. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and I like. Here, this is Let's the one. Let's help you out a little bit. The, 
struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking, sometimes it might knock me down, but I'm not breaking yeah. it. I just, you know what? I think that I think that's I think that's awesome. I think it's powerful. We can say to ourselves, "Do not be nervous. Do not be nervous. Do not be nervous," or we can sing a song that says, "The struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking, sometimes might knock me down, but no, I'm not breaking." You know, I just think. So, anyways, I get so passionate about this because I really do believe in this. Um, this, this is, is what I love though. you to do, Kim. Um, think of your amazing, wonderful memories from the past. Plug them into the present when the emotions you're feeling aren't wonderful and amazing. Um, and I want you to come up with a song, a song for you and your horse. Um, if the song is, I feel good, change the lyrics to, we feel good. Make sure that you include your horse and yourself in, in your right. song. But I really right. believe that if you can change, you know, um, any sort of negative thoughts, you know, about how you are feeling, I'm currently nervous, why am I doing this again, and that sort of thing. If you can change that into a positive by using these tools, because I could say, don't think negative, think positive. That's all fine. But here are two really neat tools for you to do that. Think of memory motivation and think of a really great song. Come up with a song for you and your horse. So that is I think awesome. those would be wonderful. I, yeah. Well, thank you so much, and I hope to uh, attend the clinic in March at the Oaks. Oh, up uh, in the Oaks. That would be great. I yeah. hope to attend it, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can't start without me. <laughs> I've taught there two or three times this year, and uh, the O'Connors and and everybody up there—they just put on a a great a great facility. They put together a great facility. I sure enjoy it. So I hope to see yeah. you there as well. Yeah. Oh yes, yes. Colleen told me about it, so I'm I'm excited. But thank you very much, and You're Jamie welcome. and Glenn, you are awesome and uh, great show. <laughs> All right, Kim. Hey, good luck. If you have any questions, just send me an email on Facebook because I have actually taken notes of everything he said, <laughs> even though he said you don't have to take notes. Uh, what goes through our mind goes through our body. Remember mm-hmm. that our emotions control our emotions. You want to detach and go to happy memory, repeat positive affirmations, and find your song, woman. Do it. You can and do it. I'm proud of you, Kim. <laughs> and here is the song you were talking about. There's the Miley Cyrus wow. song you were talking about. <laughs> Boy, and you, you Glenn, you, you, you cued that up perfectly. You cued it up perfectly, you know. It, 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 where, where you put it is, you, we may not know it, but these are the moments that we're really in. These are the moments that we're, we do what we do. You cued that up perfect. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. good. It was really good. <laughs> Oh, my gosh, Daniel, please come to Phoenix and do a clinic. Or just, you know, I'm looking at your tour schedule, and you're not on the West Coast at all. So uh, how do we need to make – oh, you're going to Montana one time and Alaska, but that's a little far. Yeah, what's this this Alaska? Oh yeah, and I'm going to Alaska for a, a two week clinic tour. I, I think I'm doing two days in Alaska, two days in Fairbanks, two days in Homer, and 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 one other place. But you know, this is uh, it's very early in my season right now. I'm talking with three groups from Scottsdale. I, I've taught the ASU um, equestrian team for a couple of years, um, so uh, I heard from uh, them again yesterday. And also the United States Eventing Association, their um, their area is uh, looking to bring me out as well. So I believe I'll be in Scottsdale three times this year. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome! But just make sure yeah. I get to I get to ride with you, even though I'm not an ASU student. I could pretend to be one. Um, <laughs> yeah, sure, I go to college. Let's all pretend to be younger than we are. That's just great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all my Corvette. And Glenn, you and I, we need to like undo a couple of buttons, get big chains, and drive a Corvette. That's really cool. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I could do that <laughs> with our cow- with our uh, our uh, cowboy hats on sideways. Oh man, would we? Uh, we would look just great. We would look really young and hip and cool. I'm sure. <laughs> See, now, you kind of disappointed me there, though, from the guy side here, uh, you know, just picking up for all of us horse husbands out there. You know, when you were talking about what your song was, I really expected it to have hips in it, but it didn't. Uh, it was kind oh, of the hippie, hippie shake. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's, my current you? song is, is the Black Eyed Peas, I Got a Feeling, Today's Gonna Be a Good, Good Day. Um, uh, I, I think that that's pretty song. neat, you know. It, you, you're, you arrive late to the horse show, you're rushed, you forget your helmet, you got to go get it. The horse is, you know, not cooperating, and you're singing to yourself, 
Today's going to be a good, good day. <laughs> you know what? Be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. That's that's what this all comes down to. You know, uh, all comes down to, to that self-fulfilling prophecy. Focus on the positive. Create the positive. Positive emotions helping us to tap into our positive emotions. So uh, I sure and, believe in that. And, yeah, and that's what's great about about your clinics, Daniel, is that and, and your kind of whole philosophy is you can take somebody like Kim who has a fear of trotting and you can take somebody like, you know, and like me who has a fear of doing a coughing complex or, you know, doing oh, yeah. whatever, um, whatever we have fears of, you know, like I am sorry, I really don't like jumping jumps with ditches underneath them. I really don't. <laughs> but what you have Somebody told me here. <laughs> I know. What's the I can point fall of that? into Come that. What's the, yeah, I can trip and fall in there. <laughs> Fill that in. Then I'll jump in. <laughs> uh, exactly. And so, but what you told Kim with the same fear, uh, you know, fear is a blanket emotion, and it covers everything from fear of trotting to fear of jumping through a coffin. And it just what you have told her, I'm going to totally take and use for me, if that's okay with you. And oh, do you have any great. other advice? Um, for for people that have fear, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. It, it, it fears when you think about it, fears, nervousness, tension, show jitters, anxiety. They're they're all caused by, the, and it is true. They're all caused by the same factor, and that factor is just the perception that we are no longer in complete control. You know, so so for you know for for you jumping in a coffin, you don't feel like you can control yourself through that coffin. You know, so therefore the emotions you start to feel are hesitant, doubtful, and and lacking of self confidence. So it starts with the the fear or the perception of f- fear it has this trickle down effect, and then it brings into uh, it brings other negative emotions into play like hesitation, doubt, and lack of self belief, for example. So it starts with fear, but then it then it sprouts roots and it grows in these other different negative directions. And I guess what I'm trying to say is the root of this is the perception that we're out of control. You know, for example, if you're riding and it's a beautiful day, you love it, you're in a great mood, you feel in great control, but then a Harley Davidson goes flying by, the reins snap off in your hands, and your horse takes off straight towards a massive cactus, <laughs> you know, You're going to get nervous now. (laughs) You've written with me, haven't you? (laughs) I I know that cactus. But see, what happens here is we're nervous now because the noise, the breakage of tag, and and the movement towards pain (laughs) creates a perception that we've lost control. So when the reins were fine, when there was no Harley Davidson, when there was no galloping towards a cactus, we felt in control. We could there for control our emotions however when we have the perception that we're out of control that's when our emotions start to control us and i've always said that sports psychology is just about you know using tools like the song or the memory motivation so that we can control our emotions so that they can't con- the emotions can't control us um so so I just, you know, the idea is to identify, you know, what we can control, you know. Well, well, I tell you what, instead of focusing on the ditch, let's focus on the quality of canter as we approach the ditch, knowing that if we develop an amazing quality of canter, the, the jump, the question will take care of itself, that sort of thing. So, you know, instead of focusing on the negative you know, ditch or on the negative canter or the negative fall, you know, and this is an interesting comment, Many riders currently use sports psychology and memory motivation. For example, they fell a month ago and they're still nervous. They can't get beyond the fall. They had a mild sprain of their back, for example. They are using memory motivation, but the memory they're focusing on is a negative memory from their their past, and that has a negative impact on their performance in the present. So so they're using the memory motivation, but the negative one, what they need to do to get rid of the negative memory, come up with a positive one. Every time they think about that fall, immediately change and put the positive memory in their mind. So so I guess what I'm saying, instead of focusing on the stress or what causes us to be negative, focus on the things that you can control, like the quality of canter towards the ditch, um, the distance at the ditch, and your uh, oh, and your Google eyes over the ditch. There we go. <laughs> if you focus on those three things, you don't have time to think about falling down into the ditch. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, Fantastic. Hey, uh, we've got another caller on the line for you. And by the way, I am, I'm still writing all of this down. I think this is fantastic. Oh, just, um, just, just buy my book. Yeah, just uh, get the we, book. We've got Regina on the line. And, uh, Dan, of course, we're talking to Daniel Stewart, who is a sports psychologist and, you know, amazing clinician. Uh, Regina, what is your question for, for Daniel? Hi, Daniel. How are you? I'm great, thank you. It's nice to talk to you. You too. Um, I am just getting ready to purchase a new horse. Um, I haven't owned in the past few years, but the horse I had owned before, um, he had a problem with confidence with jumping. Um, that kind of made me lose confidence as well. Um, now I'm getting this new horse. You know, I, I won't know him very well <clears throat> to start out with, and I'm I'm just nervous that me not having confidence will make him like my old horse and I don't want that to happen, and any advice you give me to help me out would be great. <laughs> oh, that would be – you know, and I love that you're doing this before beforehand. You know, and, and the fact that, that you're identifying perhaps who you are, and, you know, we need to understand none of us are perfect. I've always said that that we ride in the pursuit of excellence, not in the pursuit of perfection. Um, okay. And so many riders believe, you know, but they need to be perfect for their horse and that sort of thing. The fact that you've I- identified that you're not perfect, you may be an excellent rider, but but you're not perfect. You have nerves, and, and, and you would love to overcome those nerves so that it doesn't affect the potential, you know, with your new horse. I think that's great. So good good for you for I- identifying before the fact, you know, uh, uh, what you're going to be working on. And, you know, it's funny, when I work with a lot of young riders, with youngsters, for me, it's, sports psychology is preventative medicine. If we can teach young riders and, you know, and people like you, um, before we get nervous, before we get tense, if we can teach, you know, uh, ourselves to be positive and energetic and, and focused, you know, th- then we can move forward. With a lot of, uh, you know, with a lot of us adult riders, we're already nervous, we're already tense, and as a result, it turns into more like corrective medicine. So, you know, with youngsters, it tends to be preventative medicine, you know, and then with oldsters, it's all corrective medicine. What you and I can do right now is preventative medicine. You've got this new horse coming, you know, up the pipeline, and if you can figure out one or two tools that you can do to, you know, sort of take that nervousness or the perception of nervousness and put it to the side, then I think that, I think that you can correct it before you get on him. Um, did you hear the earlier show about the songs and the memory motivation? Were you able to hear that? I actually wasn't able to because I, I was at work. But um, okay, okay. I'm going to briefly summar. I'm going to briefly summarize what I, sp- I told another rider, and then I'm going to give you one or two new tools to work on your on your own. And Dan, the first one we Dan, talked to. Yeah. Dan, I just wanted to say too that uh, that anybody can go back immediately after the show's done today. We have this in recorded version, so she can go back and take a listen to what you said there. Uh, on the recorded version as well. Excellent, okay. great, and and you know I imagine you know I imagine Glenn that you would agree that what we talked about with Kim would would you know benefit all of the riders. So yeah, I I think that's a great idea. Do go back and and listen to the earlier portion of the radio show. Um, but to just summarize in ten seconds, I encourage the rider from before to think of positive memories from her past. You know, positive, motivational, uh, uh, energetic, confident memories. And then when you sit on this new horse, think of those. Oftentimes, what's going through your mind goes through your body. So if you're thinking of positive, um, confident memories from your past, oftentimes the positive, confident emotions go into your body, and, and the horse feels that. The second thing I told the, the previous rider to do was was to come up with a song, sing a song, sing a, a motivating song. You know, like um, uh, 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 I feel good. No, 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 no. You know, like literally, kind of rock it out. Get on your horse and just rock it. You know, uh, the song that I, that I sing is today is going to be a good, good day. So. If I'm on a new horse and my and I I'm I, I'm making an effort to avoid having my negative energy affect him, I'm going to sit on that horse. I'm going to think of positive memories and sing positive songs because okay. if they create those positive emotions, then 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 my body feels those positive emotions. Whereas if I sit on the horse and go. I hope I'm not nervous today. I hope he doesn't feel my nervousness. Oh, good Lord, don't let me get nervous. I can feel it coming. Don't oh stop being nervous. If we focus on the negative. The negative emotion, the 
you know, it, it creates that potential for negative emotions in your body. So I want you to do that. I want you to think of a great memory from your past. I want you to come up with your song for your horse. And listen to the listen to, to the radio show because we talked about some pretty neat songs. Um, here's here's a, a couple other things that I'd like you to really think about, okay? And, and I think these are going to be really specific for you. Um, we talk a lot about, I call it brain babble, you know, or your self-talk or the words you say to yourself. Um I want you to listen to the words that you that you say to yourself. One of the the, the the most understood rules of positive thinking is to avoid negative words like can't and and hate and those sort of things. Um, uh, but I, here's here's a great example. I spoke to a rider recently, and she said she, when she gets upset, when she gets nervous, she goes, "Why do you keep doing this?" And that's what she says to herself. She says it, and sometimes she goes, "I get so frustrated, I even say it out loud." Why do you do keep that. doing this? <laughs> What's that? I said I do do that too. Okay, I think you might just by the sounds of it. So, so when when you, so this is the coolest thing. Listen carefully. So she says this. She goes, "Why do you keep doing this?" Or why do I keep doing this? The interesting thing here is the inflection on that sentence is on the word "this." Why do you keep doing this? Meaning, why do you keep getting nervous? Why do you keep getting tense? Why do you keep doing this? The inflection is on the last word "this." What I've encouraged her to do is just to simply change the inflection to the word I, and it goes from, why do I keep doing this, to why do I keep doing this, meaning, why do I keep riding, so she goes, why do I keep doing this, she then changes it to, why do I keep doing this, oh, I keep doing this because I love it, I keep doing this because my horse is wonderful, I keep doing this because um, uh, I love being athletic and outdoors. I keep doing this because of my love for the horse. So she's asking a question, but she's simply asking it in a negative way. Why do I keep doing this? And then what she's doing now is she's learning to re to change the, the inflection in the sentence to, why do I keep doing this? Well, I keep doing this because I love my horse. So her initial sentence of, why do I keep doing this, changed to, why do I keep doing this? And now after working on it, she's to this point, why I keep doing this. Why I keep doing this is because of my love of the horse. So yes, I get nervous. Yes, I get tense. But why I really keep doing this is because of the love of the horse. So what I'm saying is listen to the words you say to yourself, um, perhaps just simply by changing the inflection. Because if you if I write this sentence down, why do I keep doing this? It could be either very positive or very negative. That writer just is using that na- that, 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 that sentence in a negative way. Listen to the words you say to yourself um, and see if you can change them in, into a positive. So I, I think self-talk is, is really important. I think uh, we talked a lot about be careful what you wish for. You might just get it. If we say to ourselves, you know, why am I so nervous? I hate being nervous. I think if we say those words to ourselves, we develop the potential for feeling that nervousness. Um, so that's the first thing. I want you to think about the, the words you say to yourself and change them to positive if need be. The second thing that, that I'd really recommend that you, you consider doing, and it's a really neat technique, it's called tough acting. And I think this is going to be really important for you. Tough acting is a, it's a weird technique because even though you know it, it benefits all athletes, from equestrians to swimmers, for example, um, it's an amazingly powerful technique, but it wasn't designed for athletes. It was designed for Hollywood for example, Julie Roberts is a very great, tough actress because she can think really sad thoughts and cry for the camera. I mean, I think we all agree that makes for a pretty amazing actress. It's called tough acting because what you end up doing is you put thoughts in your mind, and those thoughts are so powerful that they change how your body, you know, how your body moves, for example. So, for example, Julie Roberts thinks really negative, or negative, sad thoughts, and she cries. Her emotions change her motions you know for riders what we encourage riders to do is to also do t- tough acting to put positive thoughts in your mind and allow that to change your body so it's called tough acting but i believe it should be renamed fake it till you make it <laughs> okay because okay, honestly is julia roberts really sad i've done that my whole life daniel oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not even going there. I'm not going <laughs> to even touch that. <laughs> but I guess what we're saying is Julia Roberts isn't really sad behind the camera. She's faking it. She's just she's a faker. She's faking sadness. She puts in a sad thought. She puts little furrows on her forehead. She drops her shoulders. She thinks sad thoughts, and as a result, she becomes sad. Her emotions start to control her emotions. As riders, we do the same thing. We do the tough acting, but we don't put the sad negative thoughts or 
you know, perhaps, as you mentioned earlier, the nervous and doubtful thoughts. We don't put those thoughts in our mind because those can create that nervous, doubtful way of writing. In our mind, we put energetic, confident, self-belief thoughts, knowing that if what's going through my mind is, I can do this, I believe in myself, this is amazing, I'm ready, I'm energized, I'm confident, I can do this. We have to understand, if those are the thoughts going through our mind, those are the feelings that are going through our body as well. So I really, so that's called tough acting, and it's it's a bit of an interesting technique, and it's very simple. Um, uh, uh, just even if you're not feeling confident, even if you believe you're going to be nervous, just fake it. Just fake confidence. Uh, I remember mm-hmm. this one rider. Um, he's walking around, and he's like, he's like, hey, you look great, fantastic, estupendo, pa pa pa. You know, he's like all weird and cheesy and I'm like oh that's so creepy don't ever do that again and he's like when I get really nervous I start complimenting my opponents I start walking out telling everybody they look great wonderful he goes when I start doing that I start to pluck up my feathers I feel better he goes even if I'm nervous if I walk around for a couple of minutes thinking confidently complimenting my competitors he goes I start to feel better he's just acting tough he's faking it but he's making it as well. So we can say, I wish I was confident. I wish I could stop being nervous. Or we can, from our past, recreate a wonderful, powerful memory motivation. We can come up with a great song. We talked about the song, um, The Climb by Miley Cyrus. You know, the words are, you know, saying that, you know, uh, it's a mountain in front of me, uh, but if I keep working hard, I can climb that mountain. I can get to the top. If we can come up with a memory motivation, come up with a song, if we can listen to the self-talk that we do and change it to a positive, and if we can fake confidence whenever we need it, then perhaps we can start to make that confidence. So those are four tools that I'd really suggest you consider. Think of a memory from your past. Come up with a great, positive, motivating song. Um, turn all self-talk from negative, if it is negative, into a bit of a positive. And then the last, you know, do the do the do the Glenn, do the fake, <laughs> fake it till you make it. Um, just sit up there. I'm confident. I do this. I love this. I'm ready. I'm prepared. Just, uh, just. Tap into the positive in your mind, knowing that whatever's going on between your ears is going to drift down below those ears into your body. So I hope some of those will work. Regina, thank you, Regina. Uh, Yeah, I mean he's he's full of such amazing information. But if you want to check him out um, on tour, you can go to StuartClinics.com. I think you're in New Jersey, and I I know he has some come. Yeah, coming up in, in New England, so uh, maybe something will be close to you, and you can check it out at stewartclinics.com. Also, Daniel, what is the name of your book? Oh, it's Ride Right. It's Ride Right. So all the everything we talked about today is in the book, so, yeah, that will be great. Pick it up, and I think I mentioned earlier yeah. um, I'm now writing the second book, Ride I think it might be Ride Right 2. <laughs> ride Right <laughs> Part 2. I don't know. Ride Ride right again. Keep riding right. <laughs> ride right again. Ride right too. But um, yeah, and and I know that I am teaching in Philadelphia three or four times this spring. So um, Regina, perhaps we'll have a chance to to meet each other one yeah, day. I'd, I'd sure enjoy teaching. Silly. you. Bring your oh, new perfect. horse, Regina. He'd love to <laughs> love to school you a little bit more. But hey, Daniel, unfortunately, our show is actually over. Um, we have been taking so many notes and writing down so many things. I totally lost track of time. Um, we have got, of course, we'll have you on, you know, all the time, and we're going to book you a little bit earlier because we still have people that wanted to talk to you on the line. So, um, would you be uh, willing to come back on again with us next month and take some more calls? Oh, I'd love to. I think that would be super fun. I'd love to. My pleasure. All right. That'd be fantastic. And I will see you in Phoenix some point oh. this year. <laughs> that sounds it's great. Both- it was nice talking to you guys. You take care oh, and enjoy the, enjoy the new year. You, hey, Daniel. I got, yeah. Hey, Daniel. Here's a little something to make Daniel say. Oh. I got a feeling <laughs> that tonight's gonna be a good night. Yeah. That tonight's gonna be a good night. Good night. Is that the one? <laughs> That's the one. That's my song. That's my song. <laughs> Daniel, we would play more than 20 seconds of it, you. but they would sue us, so we can't. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> you guys have a great rest of the day. It was wonderful. Thank you, Daniel. You. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Daniel.
I know that was a little longer than usual, but I think it was worth it. It was a lot of fun, and Daniel is full of great information. And uh, we did give his website address there, so you can find him over there. Well, we'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Until then, stay safe, everyone. The Horse Radio Network and the Horse Radio Network hosts are not responsible for statements of guests or their opinions. Use your own judgment when listening to the tips provided by the experts on Horse Tip Daily. 